Welcome back to Nature League. It's June of 2021, and for this episode, I have a special treat. The Tribeca Film Festival is happening right now, and one of the documentaries premiering is called Tigre Gente, an investigative look at jaguar trafficking between South America and Asia. What's even more awesome, though, is that the director and producer is Liz Unger, who is one of my closest friends and currently lives with me here in Missoula, Montana. For this episode, I took Liz aside to talk to her about the film, and I got to interview one of the film's protagonists. Agnes, Marcos, a park ranger in town from Bolivia, where he serves as a guardian and protector of Madidi National Park. I spoke to them both about what passions brought them into this project, as well as their personal connections to the jaguars that are caught in the international crosshairs of wildlife trafficking. When I was an undergrad at UNC Wilmington, which is where I met you, that's right. Ago, I really wanted to get out and see the world. I was in the midst of pursuing a biology degree, and I felt this really strong inclination to volunteer somewhere at a wildlife refuge. I looked online and found this pretty obscure wildlife refuge in Bolivia. It's outside Medina National Park in the rainforest that was rehabilitating victims of illegal wildlife trade. And so that experience really influenced me and I held on to the idea of doing some sort of project, big scale project about wildlife trafficking in South America. Back in 2015, I actually woke up from a nap when I was in grad school at Classic. NYU. Classic. <laughs> And essentially, I just had this really strong feeling that I needed to do a documentary. And at that point, I had no idea how to make a documentary. I had no experience in documentaries. I was just doing photojournalism and writing at the time. The jaguar is central to the film. Did you see any jaguar individuals in South America? When I was 19, volunteering at this wildlife refuge, there were jaguars that were the victims of legal wildlife trade. I did not volunteer with those jaguars, but I would see them from afar mm -hmm. and it would just have such a strong impact on me seeing the fact that they were either poached when they were young or their mothers were killed and they would have to spend the rest of their life being real rehabilitated. I mean, there is no really going back. It's very hard for them right. to go back into the wild. Um, the only other time I was working at a eco park in Mexico and they had two jaguars there. One of them was melanistic and his name was Onyx and he scared me bad. I recall those conversations. Yeah. <laughs> you um, were like, I love you, but I'm very afraid. <laughs> yeah. So I just had this really big appreciation for them for a long time. Of course, we had to film some jaguars in some way for the film. And I had watched this really interesting film called Embrace of the Serpent this celebrated film that my uh, director of photography and I actually watched on a laptop on the fringe of the Amazon and while we were in Bolivia shooting for this film and the way that they shot jaguars in that movie, I knew right then years ago that I wanted to shoot jaguars in that way for this film in this really like visceral, poetic way that honored the intensity of what they are and what they in mean. Intensity is the perfect word. Yeah, and I think that you're your stylizing 100% matches that. One of the coolest things about the project is that simply by doing it, you found out quite a bit of, of, of a problem, something happening, almost almost investigative journalism via uh, film. Yeah, so um, in 2015, I had woken up from that dream, felt like I wanted to do a project about wildlife trafficking in South America. I found out eventually from contacts in Bolivia that there was packages of jaguar teeth, large amounts of jaguar teeth being mailed out to China. And it was only on the domestic news circuit at the time. Nobody in the international world was talking about this. And when I first heard about it, I had to stop and like physically just kind of be like, this is actually a big story. Yeah. And I know for sure no one's talking about it. Yeah. I remember the yeah. report, the IUCN report coming up a couple of years after this about Jaguar trafficking and your name was it. And I was like, Liz, this is very cool. Cause y'all know I like policy. <laughs> it's like all about it, but that's just so cool. That was years before right now when, when the film is actually done and yet change is happening during the process. Um, yes. Which is the power of storytelling. Yeah, I think that I see the film as something that shows what the issue is. Mm -hmm. You see the players involved. You see the bigger scoping issue from supply to demand through our two protagonists, Marcos and Laurel. 
Marcos is um, Chief Protection Officer in Medina National Park, and Laurel is a Hong Kong journalist um, who's also investigating the trade from the opposite side of the world. Mm -hmm. So I think through both of their perspectives, you can not only understand the logistics of the trade, but also what's driving it. And I think mm -hmm. that's a really, really important factor to consider in all this. And so hopefully our impact campaign will reflect the ideals that we have in the film. And we'll have a really unbelievable team that spans across Latin America and Asia that can better address these issues than I ever could. You don't get that in reading a journal article. You don't get that even watching the news, right? Right. This is out of out of the lives, mouths, ears, and eyes, you know, of people um, living it into very different places, but that are connected by um, this non-human species that we rarely ever even see, which is kind of wild. I've been getting uh, two main words when people describe the film to me. They say they think it's pretty beautiful and they're moved. If they're moved, hopefully we can get enough people that feel something when they watch this film. There's going to be a way where we can get you the ability to show support to these people in whatever way you want. That's the point of an impact campaign. We use the film as a tool right. in order to gain people's interest and passion and then we will go hard and like fighting this issue and yeah. really just try to make the biggest difference that we can. The film is beautiful. I'm so proud of you. This has been like a delight to watch over the years uh, and so happy that you happen to be current roommate. So we got to be in person to enjoy all the fun onward and upward. Marcos, what is your job? What do you do every day when you're not hanging out here uh, celebrating a film premiere? <laughs> Okay, but uh, at first I want to say that I feel really proud to be a, a park ranger of Madrid National Park, a Bolivian ranger, and that also that I'm so uh, grateful with my with my national state of Bolivia, with the National Protective Service of Bolivia, with everyone, with all the people that were participating or they were collaborating with this spectacular film, Tigre Gente, but I'm really happy to be here. So can you tell me and tell us um, what is Madidi? Madidi National Park is uh, the most uh, biologically diverse protected area on earth. So for us it's a um, very good uh, a place to preserve biodiversity, but not only biodiversity. Madidi is not only a place where live uh, plants or animals or so many species. When we talk about Madidi we are saying that in Madidi are living also some indigenous uh, people. So we have a so very good uh, context, not only nature, but also uh, people, cultures living in Say Madidi. Are you from these communities that are local to Madidi or nearby? Um, is that where most of the rangers come from? Yeah, most of the rangers, they come from the uh, local communities, the indigenous communities or the like campesinas communities. In my case, I am from San Buenaventura, which is a very small town next to Madidi. Uh, so uh, I'm part, I feel as a part of Madidi National Park, definitely. Right. I was born in there, I was studying in there, so for me Madidi is my, is my home. Does that make a big difference, do you think, for you and Madidi? Absolutely, so it is uh, so important. For example, the, the Bolivian government, the Bolivian state, uh, we decided to have protected areas for people. Mm -hmm. So we have communities inside the protected areas. Mm -hmm. Maybe. It is not very common to see in other parts around the world to have like a national parks or protected areas with communities inside the park. But we as Bolivian people, as the Bolivian government or state, we understand that people is part of nature. Right. But also it is so difficult, mm -hmm. you know, to, I don't know, to make a balance between conservation and also uh, to probably to to attend all the what the communities need in right. order to help them. They are very poor people, so they need us, uh, help uh, or attention about, uh, from the state. But it's so important to have uh, these indigenous communities because they are part of our identity. So people for us is, is part of our protected areas. There's so many things that need to be watched and to be guarded. So what do yes. some of those, what do some of those jobs look like and tasks? It is, a, for me, it's a very nice job. So it's a very nice opportunity to, I don't know, to protect or to preserve nature. However, uh, you have to understand that it's so difficult as well. Mm -hmm. 
because we need to patrol very long distances. How Maybe, big? How big of a space? Oh, we are talking about, for example, about like a nine, 19,000 square kilometers. Which is massive. You visited Glacier National Park here I'm in betting, Montana. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. So beautiful, but, but so much smaller than, I mean, we think of that as yeah. huge, but yeah. that's a fraction of For Nadidi. me, it was really surprising because when we were uh, talking with the superintendent of the Glacier National Park, we asked him uh, how many rangers they have. Uh -huh. And they say, he said, we have 500 rangers. Well, how many oh. do you have? Oh my, my God, we have just 26 in all Madidi. <laughs> But 500 <laughs> ranges for one wow. protected area in U.S. is maybe uh, in, wow. in all around Bolivia we have just 300 rangers for wow. all Bolivia. But here is so interesting to see that uh, national park lacks, like the glacier has 500. It's really good. National Protected Service of Bolivia. Uh, we don't have enough money to support the the, the conservation of of Madidi or all the protected areas in Bolivia. It means that we don't have enough gasoline sometimes or we have uh, very old cars for example sure. or uh, hunters miners they have uh, even more powerful uh, like cars or motorboat mm -hmm. than us so that is for, for us is really really complicated in this film and also just in in knowing about some of the the issues with trafficking that seems in, incredibly hard um how do you how do you even notice when something is is wrong in the park. We have our rangers in different um, ranger stations or mm -hmm. checkpoints inside the park. And also we have some local people or people from the communities that they call me or the rangers to say, hey, uh, here we, is, we saw like uh, three or four people going inside the park with mm -hmm. weapons. Maybe they are hunters or we saw an, um, maybe a, like a mining company going inside right. the park with a very big machinery. Mm -hmm. So we have different ways. Uh, to to get information. That's cool that you can rely and have a community. Definitely, that's part of it. That is really important because the communities are part of the of the conservation. They are part right. of us, so they are helping. They are monitoring at, uh, at at every moment, so they know very well the territory. Their territory as well, because inside Madidi we have the indigenous territory of Takana, the uh, indigenous territory San Jose de Chupiamonas, the are Lecos de Apollo, and also the Lecos. Uh, of Guanai, so they are indigenous uh, territories. But a part of them, we have uh, approximately 30 uh, communities. They are uh, Quechua's communities in the part of Apollo. So they always are uh, helping the Madidi National Park Rangers. But sometimes as well, they are also, they are part of the problem. Right. Why not? Anytime there are people, people can sure. help or people can hurt. And sure. so, Definitely. So. so if you have the opportunity, I invite you, I invite everyone to visit this <laughs> wonderful area because you are going to, to know that Madidi is a place on earth probably where people has to visit. Because not only we have uh, so beautiful places to see as a, or to, to have an, a good, very, good, very good experience as a tourist, Madidi is the place where you have to, to know and also what kind of problems we are having mm -hmm. to preserve this very important place on earth. Madidi is not only for Bolivia. Madidi is like an heritage for all the people in the world, for all the species. So I want to have the opportunity maybe through the film to call the attention to all around the world to help Madidi. I know when I was little, I had my favorite animals. I were actually sharks for me. And as an adult, it's still my favorite, I yeah. love. And so I know that you for growing up, near and inside the, the rainforest, you, there were so many species. Which ones did you connect to the most when you were young? And do you have the same feelings now? Yeah, definitely. Yes, you have to understand nature. Sometimes it's as beautiful as birds are singing at this moment here in the United States. And when you are in the rainforest, in the Amazon rainforest, it's as well the same. Sometimes you have in the morning, it's so beautiful to see the sunrise to see, for example, the birds singing or, I don't know, doing whatever, to be hearing, for example, the jaguar as well, when the jaguar is, I don't know how to say in English, we in Spanish say uh, bramando, when the jaguar is bramando, so it's so interesting to hear how the jaguar is doing that in the rainforest. It's a very loud sound of the jaguar. Oh my God, that is so interesting. To see an anaconda or the monkeys, yeah. it is so interesting. You mentioned the the jaguar and I know that uh, within the film 
this is one of the main the main characters in a way this is a story that we're following and for you the jaguar is part of your story as well um can you uh explain a little bit about how you are connected to that species so, so i hear the story about tigre gente tigre gente is the name of the film the title of mm -hmm. the film and tigre gente for us so in that uh, world uh, culture in the Amazon is like a very uh, well-known story mm -hmm. about how uh, a man, a person, is able to become in a jaguar. Our spiritual healer, when I was a kid, he's died now. His name was uh, uh, Roberto Amutari. We were highly respectful with him because he was a very old man, a Taita, we call him Bolivia, Taita Amutari. He was our shaman. In a while, he was trying to cure us, to the kids, all the kids, because there wasn't a doctor and a hospital in our town. So this spiritual healer was uh, used to be telling us that very nice stories about how a person is able to become in a jaguar. And so me, my brother, and all the kids, they were really amazed to hear that kind of stories. I grew up thinking, to be a, a tiger gente. I want to be a tiger gente. I want to be a jaguar to take care of the ter territory. I was so jealous about the rainforest. I was so jealous about my territory since I was a kid in 1988. I had the first time, the first chance to go with my mom, with my family, to make a very, very long, maybe an expedition or a trip mm -hmm. in the Amazon rainforest. Me and my brother, we went fishing. Maybe it was like this, probably 5 or 4 p.m., I don't remember very well. We were fishing in a very small and crystalline uh, stream, and we heard something like coming to us, behind us, very slowly. So uh, my older brother said, I asked him, what is that? He said, shh, maybe it's a turtle. Okay, quiet, quiet, be quiet. We are going to catch the turtle and we are going to take the turtle uh, to mom, uh -huh. maybe for a dinner or for the lunch mm -hmm. for tomorrow. Okay, we continue, we were fishing and we started, I don't know, hear something again. I asked him, hey, hey, shh. We, we continue and the third time I hear something like uh, breaking some sticks. Mm -hmm. Trick. Yeah. Trick. So both of us, we look behind us and we saw a very big jaguar he was like this behind us observing very close maybe no more than five meters probably he was fishing too he yeah heard, he yep. heard it was time very to fish. possible right. very possible we were thinking in our dinner and maybe he was thinking in, hey yeah it's dinner maybe <laughs> why not so with my brother older brother we were no more than 12 years old i think or my brother probably 14 years old we started to run away crying, mom, mom, the tiger is coming, he's following us, he went. We were crying, just we were started to run away. And when we were getting to the place where the other people, they were uh, uh, living in that moment, one of them hear us saying that the jaguar was coming be behind us. We just uh, grabbed an escopeta, he looked for the jaguar, and the jaguar was coming very slowly. Maybe the jaguar was curious about us. I, I don't understand because if, I always think until this moment if the jaguar probably wanted to kill us or to maybe to <laughs> to catch us maybe pro why not in the moment Cats next are to the very river good at doing yeah. what they do they and could so have, in yeah. that moment uh, this man just shoot uh, to the jaguar and kill the jaguar I felt really really bad so it was the moment when I decided I don't know I promised myself to don't cause to any other jaguar was going to die because of me. I feel really guilty about that because I said, my God, it's my, uh, I'm responsible because I was crying like the jaguar is coming. So this guy just came and shot against the jaguar and it's my fault. So I, I, I felt re really bad, really bad. My mom said, ah, come on, don't be worried because if this guy wasn't going to kill the jaguar, probably you were died right now. But I never understood that and it changed me. And until this moment, I, I have in my mind, I don't know, always I'm thinking about Tigre Gente, I don't know why, but I, I feel highly connected. 
with nature. I feel highly connected with this species, with the jaguar. Being a ranger, I saw so many times to the jaguar. Mm -hmm. I took so many pictures of him. I really admire, I respect a lot to the jaguar. So I had my best moment being a ranger with, in front of a jaguar. I feel like even though that moment you described is one that hurts, I feel like maybe that moment for you was your Tigrante moment, like because of that story and that and that Jaguar staying with you, in a way that yeah. that was the moment that you became the Jaguar. <laughs> I mean, you, you brought that with you and that stayed with you your, your whole yeah. life, you know? That is because I say that, okay, I couldn't be a Jaguar, always. I couldn't be a Jaguar, but I'm protecting nature. I am protecting our part of, a very important part of our territory as Madidi National Park. So all the rangers, I respect a lot, all the team that is working with me, that I am working with them. So this is a very passionate team in Bolivia that is trying to save one of the most important places on earth. Yeah. Marcos, thank you for doing that every no. day um, and for sharing that with all of us. <laughs> I'm so glad I got to meet you and uh, I think we'll have many more conversations uh, ahead of us in the future. Sure, sure, definitely. Uh, I'm really grateful with you with Liz, with everyone here. Thank you, Marcos, for everything Thanks you do. In my dream scenario, I would take us all right now to Medidi National Park as a nature league field trip. But uh, until then, you can learn more about the park, you can even plan your visit there, or you can support some of the organizations and projects helping to protect biodiversity there by checking out the information in the description below. Thank you to both Liz and Marcos for chatting with me and for the work they have done and continue to do on the important topic of wildlife trafficking. Stay tuned here for updates about the documentary and thank you for watching this episode. The actual, the, the setup behind the scenes. I know you guys wonder where Jane is. Don't worry, supervising, nobody panic. <laughs>